All right, folks, so we have an 8300 here today, and I previously made a video about how to diagnose this thing to, um, it was having park brake issues. It wasn't shifting out of park at an idle, and we diagnosed that we have a mechanical front wheel drive clutch uh, piston leaking. So I went ahead and um, making a video here on how to fix that and replace that that clutch piston. Okay folks, so to split this thing, we're gonna be splitting it right here. And so these bolts come out. Um, there's five of them per side. There's a black cover shield that goes across that. Just take out the Allen bolts there. Then this drive shaft would come off here. Um, it'd slide back into the transmission. And those are 18 millimeter bolts. You torque them to 92 foot pounds. If this is green, or if you have an older style 8000 series, this is green. And uh, you might wanna just go ahead and update that and change the seal there while you're at it and make it a little easier. And then this exhaust clamp bolt has to come off. That exhaust clamp does. And your starter uh, wires need to come off. Good to disconnect the batteries, of course. And then that's about it for this side. Oh, down here we have the steering lines. Those have to be disconnected. Make sure you get them labeled so you don't get the wrong one on the wrong side. That would be a bad deal. You could disconnect them back here, but I think it's bolted to the front of the transmission in a spot or two. So I think it's easier just to do it down there. Um, then, of course, the, uh, the air filter tube, like this up on top, came off. And the uh, air cleaner wouldn't had to but it makes it easier to get this black shield out of here. So that's why I took that off. It would have had to come off though. Then on this side, you have a bunch of wiring that has to come off, um, just a bunch of different plugs. There's these two here on the pump, these two on the back of the pump that would get disconnected. And there's one up there and one in the front of the tractor right there. And then back here on the starter, the ether, there's a, a hose and a plug there and one down here for the oil pressure port. And then up top on your intake manifold, there's a plug there and the other side of the ether line. So that all gets disconnected and just simply wrapped around this big tube here. And of course you gotta disconnect your water line here. So I'd recommend draining your water before you get to that point. And then you also disconnect it back here. These are the heater lines um, for heat. And that's pretty much all you have to do on the top side of the machine. I'm trying to think what else needs to be taken off um, in order to do this. And the turbo can stay on. There's, it's mounted to the manifold, so that stays on. And uh, then up front here, we have the, radi or the radiator stays, but the AC condenser has to be removed. There's these two bolts here on both sides that come out. And then you can slide it sideways to remove this top rail. That would go up on top there to hold that down. So basically we're just gonna be sliding this sideways, lifting it up and holding it out here as we wheel the entire thing forward. Cause this will not be removed with the tractor or with the, this will stay with the, with the back side. So. Um, but also to do that, to make it easier for yourselves, there is these two bolts that hold this on, they're right there. Just remove those, and then this thing can twist a lot more, which makes it easier to get some more uh, movement out of that and get that thing farther off to the side. So that's pretty much all there is to doing that. Um, I might have forgot something. Okay, so... Got this thing jacked up and ready to go. There was a few things I did forget. Um, number one is these fuel lines. I take that one off right there, it goes down here. And then also up top there, there's this hose. That goes to the turn fuel port right there. It just needs to be unattached. And then the four wheel drive also has to be undone. Uh, which that's just up here. Right there, so you can see that snap ring. Mine was turned pretty easy to get to. You just squeeze that out, and then you push that shaft up into the four-wheel drive housing. Um, so a lot of those snap rings 
break and that can make it really hard but you actually you spread it apart anyway so it can make it a real challenge to get them if they're broken but it is possible thankfully mine was not so anyway i've got this thing jacked up and uh i guess there's this shield that's around that four-wheel drive shaft too but uh, yeah i got it jacked up uh for those of you that want to know this bolt here is just your regular 5 8 15 16 inch head bolt and these here bolts uh, i took them they came right from this this housing here that's what i use for that so that's the way i did it i don't care how you guys want to do it i've done it before just using the front wheels to roll it away that's not quite as easy i hope i haven't used this setup yet but uh, i think it should go pretty nice for me So you go ahead and take that outside cover off. And then down in there is a snap ring. Just undo that snap ring and then this whole clutch housing here should slide right off of there. Okay, so let's get the clutch out of here now. And you can see right here the snap ring. I'm gonna pry this snap ring out and this whole piece should lift off. It is right now, it is engaged. So I'm gonna need to press this down in order to uh, get that snapping out because there's actually pressure on this whole unit. So I need to press that down pretty tight in order to get that out of there. I simply put this on the press and use some pins there to press that spring down equally and was able to get it down far enough to get that snap ring out and then I just reversed that to put the uh, spring back or the snap ring back in after I got the new piston inside there. Start with we have a snap ring, and then we have a retainer ring, and the spring is next, compression spring. And then below that there's the pressure plate or what pushes down on the pistons on the clutch packs. And the piston would release that. There's all our clutch packs and plates. They all look good. Nothing seems damaged there. Look right here. See that? That O ring is blown right there. And that's what's creating our issue. And that's the only spot. The rest of it all looks good inside and out. But right there is definitely blown. That's leaking a lot of oil past. All right, so we got the new parts here. This is the inside uh, shaft. It comes out of the housing there. To get that out, you just simply take out the seal from from that hole out there and then there's a snap ring that goes right around there here's the snap ring just pop that snap ring out and that whole thing just slides out the bottom and then you'll have that piece to put your clutch packs back together with so we have our new parts here we have the new piston and uh, we have the outer o-ring for this here, a new seal, and the inner O-ring for inside there. So we're going to go ahead and start putting this together. Uh, first step is to get this new piston in. Um, one thing you want to make sure you do is coat this with a lot of hydraulic oil before putting it in so it slides in real nice. Okay, just watch real close, make sure no, none of the, uh, it's not catching and lifting up. If it does that, then that's definitely a problem. So now we have it all started everywhere. We're gonna stop and get really close. And you'll, you'll be able to see if it lifts back. It's not hard to tell. That looks good. So you can go ahead and push that down in there. And that should be good. Yep, there it is. The center piece, this is the piece that goes into uh, that other housing. So we're just gonna go ahead and lay that in there. And this is the direction that these packs came out of here. So we're starting with a clutch pack. 
And then you got a plate next. And if you're putting new ones in, you'd have to oil all these up, but we're just putting used ones in, so. And so next we have, this is the old piston. So we have the outside ring. Gonna press down on that. You can see it's kept pretty, pretty strongly. So it goes like that. The cup is tapered down. And we have our outside ring like that, and then our snapper will be the last thing to go in there. So, okay, so this is done. So I can pull this out, slide that out of the way. Snap ring back in. All about ready to catch right on that edge when I walk so so to speak. Okay, so you can't get these things on wrong. There's only one way it can go, and you can tell pretty quick which way that is. There's a hole right here where the oil's supposed to pass through, also this hole right there. So that's going to go up. Put the dirt back there. This? Yeah, okay. Pretty good. Just make sure this is in this corner for those lines coming down. And the rest of it should line up pretty good. All right, so I forgot to put my steering lines in there, so we had to reverse that a little bit. Um, so also, before I had this splitting stand, we used to just simply put a skid steer or something up on the weight bracket, and or a forklift would work too, and, and roll the whole thing away on the front wheels. And that does work pretty good. I mean, it's definitely not this easy. Um, there's no there's no drive shaft to line up. All you have to line up is those guide pins and those bolts. So it's it's not real difficult to get things to line up pretty good. Okay, folks. So 
This tractor is done and it's running pretty good. Um, Four wheel drive clutch is shifting like it should and not dumping pressure. Uh, we are dealing with some transmission problems yet. Some of the clutch packs aren't engaging correctly. I went ahead and calibrated it and it's, it's causing some issues there yet. So we're gonna go ahead and work through all that yet, but that will be on a different video. So if you wanna watch how to make a tractor shift smoother, you can watch that video and hopefully we can get you fixed up on that too.